Well, hello, everybody, and welcome once again to another sermon uh, from Pastor Renee. That's me. And uh, it's good to be here with you. I hope that this message touches your heart and, and helps you in, in ways that you didn't even know you needed it. So, the sermon title today is Deliver Us from Evil. And no, it isn't about the Lord's Prayer. Um, but, well, here, listen to the scripture reading and then you'll, you'll find out what, what we're going through here. Uh, the scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. And Jesus was sharing another parable. And here it says, he put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while some, everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, do you not, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and ga gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. So, here ends today's reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <sighs> so, have you ever played a prank on someone? I, I have to admit that um, I, as much as I really dislike pranks, and I think that they're mean, um, I did pull a prank on my brother once uh, when we were kids. And apparently it's still nagging at me. And I'm sorry, Paul, but it was funny. I'll tell you about it. Okay. Um, the only excuse that I can offer for doing uh, this to him was that the temptation was laid before me. There you go, temptation. And I couldn't resist committing this evil act. Sorry. Sorry again. Okay. Ready to hear what the prank was? Okay. I need a little backstory first. You see, my brother was known in our family for uh, cracking hard-boiled eggs open by smacking them on his forehead. I mean, it was, it was a silly thing to do, but it, we all got a giggle out of it. And so every time we had hard-boiled eggs, whack! And it made that funny whack noise, you know, it was funny. Okay. So, uh, the Saturday before Easter, we were up at my grandma's house, like we always did, and we went to grandma's for Easter. And, like, the day before Easter, we're getting everything ready. And I had a marvelous idea, and I asked grandma if I could keep one egg out and not hard boil it. Yeah, um, I dyed the raw egg and made sure to put it in my brother's basket. I, well, no, I didn't put it in there. The Easter Bunny did. I left instructions for the Easter Bunny. And the Easter Bunny put it in there, not knowing. I mean, the Easter Bunny would never do something like this. Anyway, on Easter morning, we all got up early and found our baskets that that silly bunny had hidden on us. And then we, you know, would sit at the table and eat our hard-boiled eggs before we left for church. And when Paul was ready to crack open his egg, I made sure to be at the table so I could witness the glory of my prank. <laughs> and just as I had predicted, Paul picked up the egg and proceeded to crack it on his forehead 
And as he was, of course, anticipating it to be hard-boiled, he thought it would have some resistance. Um, so he used enough force in cracking it to completely demolish the raw egg, causing um, eggshells and the whole runny mess to slowly drip off of his face and, and um, onto the table, probably a little in his lap. And he was very surprised. Yes. And the rest of us were very amused. So, after a good laugh, uh, Paul went and got himself washed up, and, and then we went to church. And, yes, I am fully aware that I succumbed to temptation on the holiest of days in the church calendar. And, of course, I prayed extra hard for forgiveness that Easter Sunday, which was incredibly difficult because I kept giggling every time I thought of my brother with egg running down his face. That's not the most repentant of prayers, then, when you're giggling about what you did. Ah. <sighs> What a horrible prank to play on someone, right? But not as bad as the nasty prank that Jesus was talking about in today's parable. Planting weeds among a healthy wheat crop is just a horrible thing to do. Especially when it's done to someone whose income relies upon a plentiful harvest. Now, today's parable directly follows the parable we heard from last week, and it seems that Jesus was on a gardening kick, doesn't it? I mean, after last week's message, we all felt like dirt, as Jesus told us that we all fit into one category of dirt that was in the parable that he told. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to last week's sermon. Okay. This week, Jesus tells us that we are either good seeds or weeds. And you might think that with such similar similes, the meanings would be the same. But Jesus was a master wordsmith, and he used a similar story to deliver a message of comfort during difficult times. How is it a message of comfort? Well, please allow me to explain. In today's parable, the landowner planted good wheat seeds. But an enemy came along in the night and planted weed seeds with the wheat. When they both began to grow, the workers became concerned and asked the landowner what they should do. Pull the weed? Now, most of us have weeded a garden a time or two in our lives, and in pulling out those pesky weeds, have accidentally uprooted some good plants along with the weeds. And it's quite a disappointment when that happens. And I've even been known to try and replant the, uh, the good plants in hope that it would recover from the disruption to its roots. Now, after sharing today's parable, Jesus once again told his disciples what it meant. So he said in verses 37 to 43 of chapter 13, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. 
Let anyone with ears listen. And I remember last week's uh, explanation of the same thing. Or was it in the parable? Anyone with ears, listen. And do you remember last week when we learned about the seeds down amongst the thorn bushes? That they were choked out because they couldn't receive any light from the sun. But this week, Jesus says the wheat must grow alongside the weeds and do their best to not only survive, but thrive. Well, let me tell you something, Jesus. It ain't easy. Okay. It's a lot of work. As we live amongst the weeds, they can make sinning look like a lot of fun. And we can be influenced by temptation and commit evil acts. God help us. Oh wait, God does help us. Jesus' story of the weeds and the wheat tells us that what may appear to be a lost cause to us isn't necessarily lost to the grace which God offers us when we repent of our sins. Thus, God delivers us from evil. And I'm so glad that Jesus used wheat for the crop in today's parable. Why is that? Well, have you ever noticed a wheat field on a sunny day, ready for the harvest? And yeah, sometimes in that golden sea of wheat, you do see some some green weeds growing up among them. But those weeds are a distraction for what's really happening in that field. Because the sun is reflecting off of each little grain of wheat, and it makes the entire field shine like the sun. That's what we're called to do, even among the weeds. Shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Father. I know that we are continually surprised at what God's grace can do, and for whom. We never know who we might see shining like the sun. Because God's grace is for all people. And so, may our prayers overflow for our own healing and also for the healing of the world. And may God deliver us from any evil. Praise be to God. And Amen. Thank you for joining me today. And God bless you.